Hi everyone, in this video we're going to compute the values of the square root of i. It's actually a really simple problem uh, once you understand the definitions. So solution. So if you have a complex number, say z, and you raise it to another complex number, say c, the actual definition of this is e to the c times the log of z. That's the actual definition of what it means to raise a complex number to a complex number. So definition. So this problem is all about understanding, one, this definition, which you got it now, and two, what in the world is log z? So log z is called the complex logarithm. It's an example of what's called a multi-valued function. So normally when you plug in a number to a function, you get one answer, right? Here you can get many answers. So this is equal to the natural log. Okay, now we have some new notation. This bar here means modulus, so I'll explain what that means when we actually go through the problem. So modulus, that's the bars mean, plus i times something called the argument of the complex number. So i arg z, this is called the argument. And again, if you keep watching this video, I will totally explain what all of this is. This stuff is typically learned uh, at the beginning of a complex variables or complex analysis course. Uh, depending what country you're in, uh, that would vary. In the U.S., typically you do it uh, as an undergraduate. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and start with this problem. So we have the square root of i. We can write that as i to the one-half. Okay, so now we can use our definition, right? This is equal to e, okay, e, and then c here, right, c here is one-half. So it's going to be 1 half log, and then our z is i, so log i. All right, so now we just have to work out uh, log i. So this is equal to e to the 1 half. And so log i, it's just this definition here. It's the natural log of the modulus of i, whatever that is. I'll explain it shortly. Plus i times something called the argument of i. Very, very useful mathematics. Okay, now let's talk about what all this means. Once you know what all of this means, we should be able to uh, finish the problem. So what is the modulus? So modulus. So the definition of a complex number is that you can write it in the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. a is called the real part, and b is called the imaginary part. You can think of a complex number as an ordered pair as well, a, b. And if you want to go further, when you plot your complex number, a comma b, you can think of it as a vector starting at the origin and ending at the endpoint. So the modulus of z is the length of this vector. It's the length, magnitude, or norm of this vector. And you can use the theorem of the great Pythagoras to come up with a formula. It's the square root of a squared plus b squared. So in this case, we have the modulus of i. It's like a crash course in complex analysis. <laughs> this is equal to 0 plus 1 times i. This is equal to the square root of 0 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 1, so it's 1. So the modulus of i is 1. So the square root of i, let's go back to this, is equal to e to the 1 half. Okay, And then we have the natural log of 1, which is 0, plus i arg i. Okay, natural log of 1 is 0. Let's go ahead and write that down. So this is equal to e. So that's 0, so it goes away. So we end up with 1 half i times the argument of i. So now we have to talk about what the argument is. Once we have that, we can come very, very close to finishing this problem. Okay, so the argument of a complex number, say z, is defined to be theta plus 2k pi where theta, oh sorry, where k is an integer. So k is an element of, that's what that means, this, this funny e is n, is an element of z. z is the set of integers, so k is an integer. You can write k as an integer instead of using this fancy uh, notation. Good stuff. So what is theta? Theta is the angle, well, is an angle, right? Is an angle between uh, negative pi and pi. So we'll say it's in this interval here. Now different books use different um, 
notation, this is pretty standard. Okay, so theta is here. And uh, let's say your complex number was here. This would be your theta. That's, that's the graphical explanation. It's always a counterclockwise angle made uh, between this axis here. Let me use a different color. And um, your complex number. Okay, so in this case, our complex number is i. So i is right here. Okay, i is right here in the complex plane. Okay, you can, you can think of i as the point 0, uh, 1, if you like, right? And use a different color for our, our vector here. So this is our theta. So we all know that that would be pi over 2. Theta has a name, by the way. Theta is called the principal value of the argument, and people use a capital A for the principal value, and the lowercase a when they're denoting all infinite possible values. All right, so in this case, it's just simply pi over 2 because it's i, so it's pretty easy. So the square root of i is equal to e to the 1 half i, right, e to the 1 half i. And then we have the argument of i, which we said was, well, let's see, argument of i, theta is pi over 2, then we just have the 2k pi. So it'd be pi over 2 plus um, 2k pi. This would be equal to e. I'm going to leave the, the i on the outside and distribute the 1 half. This would be pi over 4, right, because 1 half times pi over 2 is uh, pi over 4, plus, uh, and then here you just get, um, let's see, 1 half times 2k pi, you just get k pi. I guess you could stop here, right, k here is an integer, um, but let's, let's try to go further. Let's try to go further. There's a formula. I always get mixed up the name. I'm pretty sure it's called Euler's formula e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. Let's use this and see if we can come up with something a little bit nicer than, than this. I mean, you could stop here, uh, but let's keep going for fun. So in this case, theta is pi over 4 plus k pi. So this is e to the i times pi over 4 plus k pi. Just writing it down again. And that's equal to cosine of pi over 4 plus k pi, plus i sine of pi over 4 plus k pi. And I think we should be able to figure out what this is, okay? Let's see if we can. So let's think about it. So let's start with a simple case. Let's say that k is equal to 0. So if k is equal to 0, uh, we just get cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. Okay, and that's pretty easy. We all know on the unit circle that's going to be here. Okay, it's going to be here. And that's going to be square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. The angle there is simply pi over 4. Piece of cake. So this is going to be square root of 2 over 2 plus i square root of 2 over 2. So that's one answer, right? That's one answer to the square root of i. Um, let's say k is equal to 1. So if k is equal to 1, uh, we basically have pi plus pi over 4, right? So we have pi over 4, let me write it up here, plus pi. That's really 4 pi over 4, so that's 5 pi over 4. So that's cosine of 5 pi over 4 plus i sine of 5 pi over 4. Another way to do it is graphically, right? Basically, we are at this point here. And we're adding pi, so we're down here. So this is going to be 5 pi over 4. This yellow angle is 5 pi over 4. Uh, remember, pi is 4 pi over 4. So pi over 4, more, more than that is 5 pi over 4. Um, that's where cosine and sine are both negative, right? Remember, on the unit circle, cosine is the x-coordinate, sine is the y-coordinate. So this is going to be negative root 2 over 2 minus i root 2 over 2. And now you can see graphically that um, that's it. That, that's going to be it. There's not going to be any more answers, right? Because if I add 2 pi, I'm going to go all the way back around. I'm going to end up where I started. If you subtract pi, you get this answer here. If you subtract 2 pi, you get back where you started. So these are the two values of the square root of i. Um, that's it. I hope this video uh, has been helpful. That's it.